mobility in sports is more about how much force you can produce in under 0.4 seconds than it is joint range of motion, than it is flexibility, than it is how you move in a table test. And this is one reason why you, you see on Instagram all the time, people are taking screenshots of people in really low positions, and then they're mimicking that position with a mobility drill. Okay, early step, I get it. That mobility drill is not going to make you do that in sports. When we're operating at fast speeds, and I'm talking five, six, seven, eight times my body weight in force in under 0.4 seconds, how dangerous would that be to go do all that by just building mobility? Now you might say, but what about if you build strength in those ranges? That's a great step in the right direction. How dangerous though would that be for me to just build a lot of strength in those deeper ranges of motion and then expect to use that on the court? Very, very dangerous. Because weight room strength is not fast strength. Slow force is not fast force. Just like your power lifter can produce a ton of force in 0.8 seconds or in one second, that does not guarantee that they can produce force in 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. That's why they can't jump high, right? These are very different qualities. And some people are more geared towards the slow force. Some people more geared towards the fast force. I've had a lot of pro dunkers, 47, 48, even I just had a, 50, a guy with a 50 inch vertical. And they are not that much stronger with slow force. They are not the biggest squatters, but in 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds, their force is higher than all the really strong weight room guys. So when you look at pictures of a Michael Jordan, a Kyrie Irving, a Kemba Walker, a Donovan Mitchell, right? We see these guys, Allen Iverson, we see these guys in screenshots on social media being in really low positions. It's because they have joint protection in those low positions because their muscles can produce enough force to protect the joint. But that ground contact, like if I'm lunging, doing like a lunge stop where you get into that really low position, you got that really steep shin angle for that deceleration, that ground contact might be 0.4 seconds. And that's why I say you got to produce that force fast because the amount of force, the pure strength, the amount of force I can do in 0.8 is actually irrelevant in 0.4. And so even though it's strong, if that muscle fires too slow, you're not protected down there. Cool thing is your body knows that and your body's not going to let you get down there. If it did, you'd probably be at a significant increase um, risk of injury. So it's like, how do I actually handle those low positions? Well, what's the cool thing? All the guys that I just mentioned, Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, Kyrie Campbell, what's the cool thing? They built that mobility through playing basketball. They built it through, you know, I, I talk about building it through agility, things that replicate basketball, multi-directional plyometrics in low positions. That's replicating joint positions that we see in basketball, but it's replicating the, the fast force aspect of that. So Allen Iverson and Michael Jordan played in these low positions without having the secret stretches and the secret full range of motion exercises. Again, not demonizing that, that's an early step. But they built that all through playing enough basketball. And just also, let's let's acknowledge that there's a genetic component. Like Michael Jordan will be able to produce more fast force than a lot of people listening to this, regardless of how much we work on it. Um, but there is hope. Somebody like me uh, I, in high school, I was not developing fast force and I did not play in low positions. And now I can play in just as low of a position as Allen Iverson or Michael Jordan. And I, I attribute a lot of that. I'm not more flexible. I used to do a ton of yoga in high school. I was crazy flexible. I'm decently flexible, um, but I'm not more flexible than I was in high school, but I'm way more powerful. I produce way more force in under 0.4 seconds, which is why I can handle that those positions. Interesting thought I had the other day. Gaining weight can influence your mobility in sports. How? Does building bigger muscles influence your flexibility and mobility? Does it just kill you? Well, no, because you see, what's the dude like Juju Mofru or whatever? You see him on Instagram doing the splits and he's jacked. You see bodybuilders who are really flexible. It's not that. It's not that at all. You can be big and get into deep ranges of motion. I have great flexibility. Gaining weight can influence your on-court mobility because you decreased your force to body weight ratio. 
And so if I did not improve my ability to produce force in 0.4 seconds, but I got heavier, now it's more dangerous for me to be down in that low position. Now my joints are not protected because I decreased that ratio. And it's not as simple as, well, increase your pound, your, your squat by 20 pounds and gain 10 pounds of weight, right? Your strength to weight ratio went up. Your power to weight ratio did not. Your force in 0.4 seconds to body weight ratio did not go up. So if I gain 10 pounds of mass, but I also drastically increase my ability to produce fast force, then I'm going to be safe on the court. I'm not going to lose any mobility, right? But if I get really big and you've probably felt this before, I have felt this. I recently got to like 205 pounds and my mobility didn't decrease, but on the court, I couldn't hit the same positions. And it's because I was not hitting fast force enough relative fast force, I should say. So what do we do? Well, uh, you know, keep your body weight in check. Don't go crazy. Uh, don't get too big, too fast. Um, but like in terms of training, well, I can start by obviously the flexibility, the building strength through a full range of motion. This is like the safer stuff, like from the couch, it's not safe to go do explosive things in really low positions. So the better transition from the couch is flexibility. And then the better transition from flexibility is strength through full range of motion. And then from there, it's like, well, in the Mac McClung program, we have people sit on a bench. You've probably seen this on Instagram. I had uh, pro dunker Chris Staples going through this. Sit on the bench, thighs parallel. This is lower than what Chris is comfortable working with. He typically doesn't go down to these past 90 degree knee angles. And now I'm picking up one foot and pushing as hard as I can off one foot into that penultimate. And in the Mac program, he used this as a kid um, to just improve his ability to like accelerate from low positions. Um, and it's like kind of people see it as like a penultimate drill, a dunk drill. Great. But the side benefit of that is I'm getting you lower than what you're comfortable with. And then I'm producing high force in under 0.4 seconds, but it's safe because there's no eccentric. So I didn't let you load into there. I didn't land in those low positions because again, your freaking mechanoreceptors are going to go, dude, you don't, you can't load me this fast at this range. Your freaking Golgi tendon organs are like, dude, chill. It'll literally shut off the muscle or you'll buckle. And, um, because it's like, Hey dude, you, yeah, I get it. You can do this at slow speeds, but at fast speeds, I can't produce this much force in 0.4. So when there's an eccentric involved, there's always a limiter. Your nervous system is always going to limit you from getting in those low positions. Cause it knows better. It knows better than our conscious brains than to let us get down there in fast, in a uh, fat, in high loading rates, but I can sit you down on a bench and now it's all up from there. So there's really no, there's really much less danger there. Um, once eventually we got to get into the eccentric though, once we build a little bit there, then I also like in the speed code, we do a lot of half kneeling stuff, half kneeling lateral push-offs. I'm starting in a position that is probably lower than the positions that we'll be getting into in games. So I'm starting at a low position and then boom, producing force in 0.4 seconds or under. Then once I start to introduce the actual eccentric, the actual loading, I love to do it with band assistance. So hook it up to a power rack, hook it up to a rim, whatever you want to do, hold on to that band. And you can really, to start, get yourself some good assistance. I could deload 30 to 40% of my body weight, right? And drop down in those low positions. I can do a deep squat jump. And so I can go well past my 90 degrees, which I normally wouldn't go past in a jump. I can go pretty, almost like a deep squat position. I can drop down there and then I have so much band tension that my body weight is really light. So I can comfortably teach my body how to get out of those low positions. I should say how to get into and out of those low positions with high force at high speeds. Then the next session, 30% deload. Then the next session, 20% deload. Then the next session, 10% deload. Then the next session, eventually I'm working with my own body weight. So you see that nice little gradual progression where we start at the safest level and gradually worked our way up. Then I can get into some interesting stuff with like split stance. Like I can go band assisted split stance where now I'm landing in like a deep lunge position, but it's safer because again, I have that band assistance. So there's a lot of ways that you can get creative uh, with that. But at some point you got to teach your muscles to work fast 
in these low positions. And of course, sport and agility itself is going to be king here. If you look at the joint angles of agility, the dorsiflexion angles are crazy. Like, you know, you're, you're achieving all these really steep shin angles. And uh, a lot of people forget that that's probably just the best way to build it and teach our body uh, how to gradually get lower and lower is like, let me be really good at agility. Why? Because agility involves really, really high, fast forces in deep positions. Like, like a little uh, change of direction drill where you're getting down and touching the line and sprinting off the line. You know, slow-mo that and look at the deep ranges of motion that you're in. Um, so the sport itself builds that. Um, agility builds that. Assisted plyometrics build that. All concentric, starting on the bench and pushing out of that. That builds that. But I just want you guys to understand that concept is that no amount of flexibility, mobility, or slow strength training is going to protect you down in those low positions when fast force is required. Mm -hmm.